This made my editing process so much quicker. What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Marv, and today I'm gonna to be answering some of the questions that I had previously about Sidecar. Well, from a creator's perspective. After buying a 2021 M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch, I had thoughts and reservations on if I should have gone with the 16 inch for more video editing workspace. Don't get me wrong, I don't think I would have liked to have carried around a bigger laptop. But once I had a look at the 16 inch, those two inches, <laughs> make a massive difference. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, I like the slick design of the 14 inch, but when it comes to video editing, sometimes it can be tough trying to sort out your whole project on one small screen. I do have a Dell monitor, but quite honestly, the colors just don't match up as nice. And of course, you've got to plug it into the mains. You've then got to connect it via HDMI. It's just not practical and it's not what we're going to be talking about today. So that was my previous setup and my previous way of working. Whilst I was at home, of course, no one's really taken that out with them. I just didn't know what to do. I've had a look at Apple's extended displays and I wasn't really put off by the price. But once again, portability was a massive thing for me. With the new iOS update, I'm not too sure what iOS update it was. They were talking about the universal control feature and that was literally going everywhere. Seeing as iPad didn't have Premiere Pro on it, I, I thought surely there must be a way of mixing the two. But as you may know, looking at universal control, it's all about your MacBook or whatever your machine is controlling the other system within its own operating system. To simplify that for people who don't understand what I just said, if you've got a MacBook, all you're doing is moving your mouse from your MacBook screen over to your iPad and using your keyboard as kind of like two separate entities. Anyway, I didn't want that. I just wanted another form of extended display. Something that I could see two screens off of. Luckily, I popped a comment on someone else's video on Universal Control, and my question was answered within the comment section. Given not the most credible source, but that was enough for me to turn around and say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna invest in an iPad and I'm gonna see where this takes me. So I can confirm in May 2022 to anyone who's wondering, this works. This is now my super slick workflow. I love it and we'll start talking about the pros and cons. So let's start with the good stuff, pros. Obviously the first point is the extra screen space. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I needed. Now I get to dedicate one screen to my timelines and one screen to my actual video feed. Now I don't have to stop what I'm doing to enlarge my video feed and see if I've missed anything or I need to cut anything out. To give you some context on what used to happen, only having one screen, you've got a really small video format. So it's easy to miss things. That might not be important to you guys, but it surely was important to me, especially from a color perspective too. What made it even harder is if you had proxies on. Adding this screen just makes a massive difference. You can you can almost tell what will make or break your videos before or during your editing process. I have a lot less final exports because I can actually see what I'm I'm doing before I have to export. Once again, making me more efficient and saving me a load of time. My next pro is the form factor. As I just mentioned, I get a lot more screen out of using the two, of course. But this point in particular is all about portability. It's almost the same size as the MacBook 14 inch. It's a little bit smaller. The iPad Pro, I believe, is 12.9 inches. So it's not far off at all. I use the Peak Design bag, which is quite big, and the GoPro bag. And I've got no issues when sliding it into the laptop sleeves. Of course, in comparison to the 16 inch, of course, it's just going to be a bit bulkier in size once you're slipping both of them in. But what you lose in that height and bulkiness you also save in the width too. So not saying that there's a problem with either of these options because I think they would both fit in my bag, but it just it just works well for me. Something that's not a direct correlation, but it's still super important to me is multitasking. A lot of the time I am interrupted by things going on and people calling and stuff like that and emails that need to be sent off. Literally just being able to swipe out of sidecar and quickly go to my emails and messages and all that stuff is super useful. Yes, of course, I can access that on my phone, which is usually right next to me. And I can also access it on my MacBook, but it's just super easy when you've got all three options, you know? It's another memory unit source. It's another, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I'm a fan. The last pro that I can think of right now, and I'll probably have a chat with you guys in the comments, is the no noticeable latency. It's pretty solid for me. I feel like there's no lag, there's no kind of drawback within that region. I feel like I don't have to sacrifice anything for having this set up. I'm sure some of you guys who may have trialed it may be thinking, well, hang on, that's not entirely true. So let's talk about the cons. And once again, if I miss anything, or if you feel like what I'm saying isn't truthful, then just let me know in the comments. 
Let's start off with the cost in getting an iPad in your hands. It's, it's gonna cost you a pretty penny. The difference between upgrading from a 14 inch model to a 16 inch model, I'm talking MacBook Pros, you're gonna be within the realms of the hundreds. Given it doesn't have to be an iPad Pro 12.9 inch like what I got, will set you back almost a grand. A grand is a thousand pounds. Whatever that conversion rate is into dollars, I think they're similar anyway, you get the point. You pay for this practicality. Quad number two, and this is gonna clash with the last Pro that I put out there. I did say there was no latency. Now, I believe that you do not want to use this over the Wi-Fi connection that is just kind of like the normal process of using this. A bit of background story on how this works, universal control and the extended displays, you can connect them via I don't know, it's kind of like the airdrop tool, I believe, which which kind of syncs over Wi-Fi. I've found that this isn't always the most reliable connection, especially when you've got so much data transferring through the network. Of course, I'm not gonna leave it there. I'll bring it to the next con and intertwine how I actually made a solution. So this con is kind of like a half con. Con number three, I lose one of my three USB-C slots. If you are a business person who's just traveling and not using this for any kind of creative work and, and transferring video files that need to be played back at a certain resolution, at a certain speed, then you're probably not gonna have a problem. This is probably gonna be fantastic for you if you just need that dual display setup. If you're doing anything else, as I mentioned creative, then yeah, it's more than likely you better plug that bad boy in. It's great because it does come with a USB to USB-C cable when you buy an iPad Pro and with that connection, connection that's where you get the results of the no latency the pro that then comes out of that is your ipad always stays charged too the con is that your laptop is then being drained double time because it's got the power itself and the ipad in my real life experiences and practical tests it's lasted maybe just over an hour or so when I'm video editing. Long story short, always stay somewhere near a power supply. The good news in the Pro once again, in comparison to a monitor, is that you've only got one power source charging both devices. I've had a look at some displays and stuff that looked awesome, but once again, this thought of getting an iPad has been premeditated over a couple of years, if I'm honest. Even back when I was on Windows, I always thought, what could I have to travel around with and have a secondary display that I can use confidently confidently for what I want to do all the time. There are some other options, of course, Atomos have screens. I just wouldn't say that they're big and good enough. I think there was something, something related to the name of coffee or espresso or something like that, I can't remember. They had a screen and they're probably as close as what you can get to an iPad. The difference is, is you don't have a machine that can do anything past that. So potentially, but it just wasn't right for me. And then of course, external displays, but then you'll have power. You'll run into that same power problem. My last con is the colors. Ultimately, the colors just don't match. I trust the colors from my MacBook just that little bit better. I'm not into collaborating my monitors and going through all that process personally and right now. But when I look at the two images on, on both devices, there is a clear difference and I trust the MacBooks better. However, you take the good with the bad. If you flip that on his head and you think about most of your consumers, they're gonna be relating to most things that are on their phone and TVs that might not have a better display and iPhones and you get the point. It's, it, it's probably, the content that I put out is definitely probably viewed on more phones and iPads than they are MacBook Pro 14 inches. So what I do for things like Lightroom, where I know that I'll be delivering images for social media and so on and so forth, I'll have my second display up just so that I can see the difference in colors. Because on my laptop, it looks a lot different to what it looks like on an iPad. And once I send that to my phone, it looks exactly how it looks on the iPad and what it looks like on my MacBook. So once again, a con and a pro, it's all dependent on what you want from your setup and how you wanna do things. So I think I'm done with what I have to say about it. I will ask the question, knowing what I know now, would I still make the same decision? Yeah. I, I don't regret buying the iPad. I think I would. In regards to my Mac, I think I would have opted for a higher specification, i.e. M1 MacBook 2021 14 inch, MacBook Pro Max, or is it just M1 Max? I can't, I can't figure it out. I'd go for the max version. And that would just be to help out my video process a little bit better. I've spoken so many times on this channel about my broken M1 Mac and replacing it and it's still popping and that, yeah, there'd been endless problems. So I think if I got the max that might have hindered away some of those issues, but that's got nothing to do with how the iPad performs. I don't think having this setup invites me to set up anywhere. 
I'm looking forward to going away and traveling again and just not having any kind of worry about having to struggle through my editing process. Yeah, I'll end up taking a little bit more with me than what I would usually do, but I think I'll feel more comfortable and probably get a lot more done too. So if you've got an extra 1000 or if you want to spend a lot less on a different type of iPad, please check compatibility on the iPad that you're considering. But I think a lot of them work with this feature. Here is another reason to say yes. Anyway, hit me up on the socials, Marvelous Visuals. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more future content. And I'll see you next time. Peace. Jesus, I sound like an Amazon affiliate member. I know people asking everyone to buy them. It's horrible. I do believe in it. It does work for me. But Jesus, they should be. Yeah, I should get something for this. Anyway.